Would gentlemen please remove your hats for the invocation. <clears throat> Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you and praise you. It is this time of the year when we all gather together to celebrate the graduation and accomplishments that our students made. For the past academic year, it is the year filled with challenges and hardships for many of us here. But Lord, we thank you for always loving us, blessing us, and protecting us. We thank you for the Board of Regents and the Seminole State College Administrative Council. We thank you for giving them wisdom and courage to lead this institution to move forward. We thank you for the faculty and staff and Seminole State College and the student fa families. We all would not be able to stand here without their strength, encouragement, and support. Our graduating students, Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 to 26. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. In the name of Christ, I pray. Amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished faculty, regents, and graduates, good morning, and welcome to the 88th annual Seminole State College commencement exercises. Due to our social distancing, we would ask if you would like, you may remove your mask for the duration of the ceremony and make sure that you wear it during our recessional. Our thanks to Associate Professor of Business and Education, Jeff Chang, for delivering the invocation this morning. Professor Chang is a distinguished member of the faculty, and he received his tenure from this institution this spring. So thank you, Jeff. We want to welcome those joining our ceremony by live stream today. Due to COVID-19 safety precautions, we have limited in-person attendance to our commencement exercises. But we know that there are many family and friends of our graduates who are watching this ceremony remotely. We thank them for their understanding and patience during this challenging time and hope that they will join our graduates in our celebration on the lawn immediately following this morning's ceremony. At this time, I'd like to introduce those seated on the front row and ask them to stand as I call their names. First, we'd like to recognize members of the college's Board of Regents. These are people who volunteer their time and their effort to ensure that to the students and to the rest of the public that Seminole State College continues its tradition of excellence. Starting on my far right, Regent Marcy Donahoe, Regent Kim Hyden, Regent Ryan Pitts, Regent Ray McQuiston, and the chair of our board, Regent Curtis Morgan. I will be introducing our speaker in a moment, but others to my left on stage who play important roles at the college are Dr. Bill Knowles, Vice President for Student Affairs, Courtney Jones, Vice President for Fiscal Affairs, and Dr. Linda Goler, Vice President for Academic Affairs. Please help me recognize these regents and administrators for their leadership. It's rewarding to everyone associated with Seminole State College to witness the academic success of each of our students in this room. Graduates, we are proud of each and every one of you, and we applaud the hard work, sacrifice, and commitment that, you, that you've made to reach this level in your academic career, and we congratulate you on your success. I'd like to ask everyone wearing honor stoles and uh, cords to please stand. These students and their faculty sponsors are members of various academic and discipline-related honor societies on campus, as noted in your printed program. We recognize their special achievements and demonstrated qualities of good citizenship. Please join me in congratulating them for their achievements. Thank you. You may be seated. At this time, I'd like to recognize the faculty and staff at Seminole State College who work many long and hard hours to create an environment conducive to student learning, growth, and achievement. And probably during this past year, that is truer than it has ever been. To the employees of Seminole State College participating in today's ceremony, we realize your special efforts have helped these students reach their educational goals. At this time, I'd like to ask all of the faculty and staff at the college to please stand and allow our students to express their appreciation. Thank you. It's my honor to introduce this year's commencement speaker, the Honorable Roger Thompson. 
Senator Thompson was elected to the Oklahoma State Senate in November of 2014. He represents Senate District H, which is comprised of Altmulgee and McIntosh counties and parts of Oak Fusky and Muskogee counties. He currently serves as chair of the powerful Appropriations Committee of the Senate. He's president of the Le Le News Leader Company, which owns and produces Okima's newspaper, the Oklahoma, the Okima News Leader. His wife, Pamela Thompson, owns Pamela's Flowers and Okima Office Supply. He's currently president of the Okima Community Improvement Association and serves as economic development consultant for business and municipalities. Senator Thompson graduated from Preston Road School of Preaching and later attended Southwestern Bible College and seminars where he received his master's and doctorate's degrees in theology. Please help me welcome Senator Roger Thompson. It is a great honor to be with you here today and President Reynolds and Board of Regents and faculty and students. Uh, it's just great to be together. I mean, after 2020 and 2021, it's great to see faces and smiles and to simply uh, have a, a great occasion. And certainly today is a great occasion for us uh, to be together. We understand over the last couple of years that perseverance has certainly been the key and uh, we are emerging into a totally different world in many ways, especially in technology and education than what we entered uh, a little over a year ago. And I know through the State Senate and the work that we do at the Capitol, uh, that is especially true. This morning I've been given almost a, a difficult task with my degree in theology mixed with a politician. President Reynolds has said anywhere from seven to ten minutes. And uh, so, you know, I've been working on that for some time, and I just want to tell you today, it will not be seven minutes, but we'll be close. In the state senate, I serve with 48 state senators. They come from all walks of life, many different political point of views, and they're all really, really great people. And we enjoy uh, a lot of camaraderie. Uh, we enjoy a lot of association, and there are times that you may see us debating on the floor, and the debate can become very heavy and then turn around and ask, what are you doing for lunch? And go out and have lunch. And I believe that's the way that it ought to be. But one of those is a good Democrat senator friend of mine, uh, Senator Anastasia Pittman. I served the first three years with Senator Pittman, and she's an amazing lady. If you ever have opportunity to be in her audience, I would encourage you to do that. We're standing at the back of the chamber, and she just simply utters a phrase. She said, you know, that we are to be able to vote our values, and we are to value our vote. It's been over three years ago, and I, I just keep thinking about that phrase, that we ought to be able to vote our values and to value our vote. So today I want to spend just a few moments asking where our values are established from. And one of the areas that they are established from is from family. They are foundational to life. Your family will always be with you, and they will always be foundational. There are periods of our life that we feel like, and nature brings us that way, that we begin that separation process from our family. We begin to go out on our own, and many of you are there. Many of you have been there, and many of you will be there. But we need to understand that those values that we were taught early on at home are very good values that continue to lead us through life, and the family will always be there. The second area that I think about are friends. We have an opportunity to establish friendships with people as we go through life, and I simply encourage you to choose wisely in those friendships and always be loyal. So much in the world of Facebook today, whether we friend and unfriend people on a regular basis because we may like what they say or we don't like what they do and we unfriend them, I'm telling you, if you get to the end of your life and you get somewhere where you can count on your fingers, your true friends, you are a considerable, fortunate person. They'll walk with you, and there are going to be days when you're going to call those friends and say, hey, I need to meet down at the coffee shop, and we need to talk for a while and I don't care where you are or what they're doing, they're going to be there. Be that type of friend, be that type of value in your life. But also, we get some of our values from our experiences in life. I read a quote a while back from Jennifer Lee, who I consider to be a great author. But, but she said, when you're free from self-doubt, you fail better. Because you don't have your defenses up, you can accept the criticism, you don't become so preoccupied with that failure that you forget how to learn from it and you forget how to grow. And when you believe in yourself, you succeed better. Hours spent questioning, hours spent doubting and fearing can be given over to working and exploring and living. 
believe in yourself. In my lifetime, I've had many opportunities. I've traveled here, I've traveled internationally, and I want to tell you that I've had more failures than I've had successes. But I've had opportunity to learn from those failures. It made me a better person. It made me better to reach out to others and share with them. Because there's going to be opportunities in your life whenever that people around you, those you love and trust, they're going through failure in their life. And it's not a time to hear, I told you so. It's not a time to hear criticism inside of their life. It's a time when that friend steps up and says, I have walked that road before and I'm here to walk it before you never doubt yourself. You still have value in life. And whenever we do make bad choices, and we will make bad choices, we all make bad choices from time to time, I'm telling you to ease up on yourself. Have some compassion for yourself as well as for others, and there's no such thing as perfection in life. And life is a journey and not a race, and enjoy every day as you go through it. My values also come, though, not only from our family and not only from our friends or our experiences, but from our educational values and educational opportunities. I'm hoping today that you have an ongoing desire to learn. An ongoing desire to study and to learn more about what's going on. But I hope that you have more than just Facebook news, more than Instagram bites, more than what the 5 or 6 o'clock news will tell you, that you will be earnest and say, I want to dig in, and I want to know truth, and I want to know what's going on in my world, and I want to continue to educate myself, because I'm telling you, as Francis Bacon said a number of years ago, knowledge is power. And knowledge is missing in our world today. And we need individuals who know, who learn, who are filled with compassion, who can make a difference. My values also come from two other areas. And one of those areas is from religion, and another area is from politics. And oftentimes we hear those are two subjects that are never to be discussed in public. Religion and politics. Well, maybe instead of not discussing them, we should learn how to discuss religion and politics in a civil manner. That we can sit down and we can learn, and that we can look at different attitudes, we can look at different ideologies, and we can do all kinds of discussions and walk away from there and say, man, I learned something about that today that I did not know, and I've become a better person. And I can only learn if I'm listening. But also, as Bradley Whiteford said, I can have all of that, but what do I do? And he penned the words, he said, we need to take action. Every story that's ever connected with and every leader that you've ever admired, every punny little thing that you've ever accomplished is the result of taking action. Your volition, you, you have a choice. You can either be a passive victim of your circumstances or you can be the active hero of your own life. And it doesn't matter that your dreams come true if you spent your whole life sleeping. It doesn't matter if they come true if you're not engaged. And so get out there and go for it and don't be caught just sitting and watching the world go by. Senator Pittman said we need to vote our values, but we need to value our vote. When I think about valuing our vote, I think about generations that came before me. Today in our land, we're not speaking German in our land or any other foreign language because of the men and women who defended America. And today we are assembling here in this auditorium because of the men and women who have defended our country and still defend our country today. Literally millions of people have fought for the right for us to vote. I recently visited the VA hospitals Recently talked to some of those who have been in foreign wars, whether it be Vietnam and, and uh, the Vietnam veterans, and they just simply need to be told from time to time, welcome home. They never received that, and we understand that. But in the hospitals today are young men and women who have gone overseas, and they said, we want to make a difference. And they come home struggling with their life. And I realize that. They struggle with suicide. We lose 20 of our veterans every day to suicide. We lose many, many more to those who come home and cannot cope in a world that they see here different. And they get involved in alcoholism and a number of things. And I know this firsthand because I buried my nephew about three months ago. 
there are those who struggle to fight for the very freedoms that you and I have today, and they struggle when they get home. And so always remember that freedom is not free, and it should never be taken for granted. Our forefathers and our foremothers fought for the right for us to go to the polls. I look out across our audience today of young men and young women and realize that the 19th Amendment was only adopted in August the 26th of 1920. The 19th Amendment, the right for women to vote. I'll be 64 coming up here in just a few days, and that means just about 30 years before I was born, women did not have the right to vote. It's not been that long ago. We cherish that right to vote, and we cherish that history. So today, as I conclude my seven-plus minutes, I want to encourage you to vote your values. Don't let somebody else determine what they are you determine those for you. You take your experiences. You take your life. You take your choices, and you become the person that you want to be. And don't be so individualistic that you can't get along, but create who you are and be who you are. But never forget those who have fought for you today, your parents, your grandparents. You're, you're standing on their shoulders. Those who have fought overseas were standing on their shoulders. The faculty and staff were standing on those shoulders. And all of these experiences around us make us who we are. We are indeed standing in America, the home of the brave and the land of the free. And I'm looking into the eyes of men and women who will continue that tradition. And thank you for dedicating yourself to learning more and doing more. And thank you for what you will do in the future for America and for everyone who travels through Oklahoma. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Thompson. Thank you for your service to the state of Oklahoma, for your support of higher education, and your longtime friendship to Seminole State College. We appreciate you being here today to help us celebrate the achievements of these students. At this time, I would like to ask our Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Linda Goler, who serves as the Chief Academic Officer of Seminole State College, to come forward to make the presentation of candidates. Thank you, President Reynolds. Candidates, I want to take the opportunity to personally congratulate each of you for having reached this significant milestone in your life. You have justified reasons to be exceedingly proud of yourselves. Will the candidates for associate and arts degree please rise and remain standing? Will the candidates for the associate in science degree please rise and remain standing? Will the candidates for the Associate in Applied Science degree please rise and remain standing? <clears throat> President Reynolds, pending a final audit, these presented candidates have fulfilled the curricular requirements for their respective degrees as specified by the Oklahoma State Regents for Higher Education and Seminole State College and therefore are eligible to be awarded the associate degree. Thank you, Dr. Goller. Candidates, you may be seated. Will the first row please rise and advance forward? Sydney Mackwise. <laughs> Candace Davidson. Delaney Manning.
Samantha Winter. Chloe Kimbrell. Devin Tucker. Good job, Devin. Tima Yargi. Ashley Hill. Michelle Mayfield. Adam Bear. Brandy James. Susan James. Sydney Whaley. Kale Ashcraft. Daly Ann Owens. Cayman Thomas. Junie Ajere. Jordan Flood. D'Angelo Adkins. Latarius Smith. Nikhil Jamison. Cassidy Lawson. Carissa Eads. Nicole Harrison. <laughs> Aaliyah Blancet. <laughs> Tanya Jenkins. Terry Mox. Dylan Dildine. Gretchen Robledo. Harmony Gomez. Amber Spain. (laughs) 
Jonathan Duarte. Cynthia Armas. Kaya Wright. Chrislyn Jones. Asa Samuels. Ernesto Martinez, Jr. Leonard Davis. Jackson Northcutt. Grant Murphy. Tiffany Maxey. Sunny Middleton. Lariah Allen. Michaela Wright. Paula Pekatiwa. Mackenzie King. Courtney Rouse. Rachel Arguez. <laughs> Melissa Johnston. <laughs> Emma Norman. <laughs> Dayton Jackson. Darius Lowe. Kamaya Lyons. Bobby Letha. Kennedy Holderreed. London Lewis. Shakira Gladness. Jacob Osborne. Kirsten Winters. Cameron Davis. Karen Leadham. Taryn Washburn. Io Jones.
Jaron Maples. Ty Van Meter. Owen Lesh. Brett Russell. Isaac Bloomer. Callan Galloway. Connor Womack. Matthew Kaiser. Brock Rodden. Seth Hopkins. Cameron Curl. Aiden Bruno. Caden Mitchell. Francis Scarlett Hunter. <laughs> Josie Jared. <laughs> Jordan Little. Jace Farmer. Cordell Giles. Creed Watkins. Trevor Martin. <laughs> Tamika Hamilton. Jeremiah Kelly. Marissa Vega. Hannah Johnson. Anna Madden. Jennifer Stapp. Allison Bow. Justin Short. Caleb Namapia. Michael Davis.
Alyssa Corris. Jessica Smith. Stephanie Bear. Sierra Springer. Samantha Stacy. Ashley Attaddlety. Candace Irvin. Danielle Swift. Hannah Flacco. Sabrina Garza. Tierra Leftwich. Suzanne Clark. Angela Stark. Alyssa McCracken. Hannah Eastman. Callie Kaiser. <laughs> Tyann Maytubby. <laughs> Casey Rimpy. <laughs> Tegan Freeman. Michaela Johnson. Kelsey Edmonston. Carrie Bernard. Shay Marino. <laughs> Tatiana Guilford. <laughs> Harley Gregory. Sierra Hodges, <laughs> Rebecca Garcia, <laughs> Amaya Grace, <laughs> Sydney Brizowitz. Annette Johnson. <laughs> Bailey Henley. <laughs> Caitlin Haswell. Gavin Harjo. Vic 
Victoria Lee. Vanessa O'Hagan. Carter Lavalley. Cynthia De Leon. Brett Cobb. Evan Barron. Thank you. Tayton Treadaway. Kaylee De Leon. Amanda Elmore. Jamie Childress. Nicole Little. Kendra Sandlin. Emily Stroop. Nadia Harmon. Allison Holly. Will all candidates for graduation please rise? By the power vested in me by the Oklahoma State Regents for Higher Education and the authority granted by the Seminole State College Board of Regents, I now confer upon you earned associate degrees. You may move your tassel from right to left. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the graduates of the class of 2021 Seminole State College. 